I'm going to tell you a story about Tim. So Tim has osteoporosis, like many of you watching this probably do. About a quarter to a third of our patients are men, which statistically means that there are probably more men with osteoporosis seeking out a natural treatment than maybe the statistics would say that men have osteoporosis. But we see this fairly frequently, and I want to pass this along to you, but his story will apply to everybody. So uh, Tim had a history of gut problems, was diagnosed with osteoporosis. And like I said, he's an athlete, he's a go-getter. And so he wanted to do as much research as possible, wanted to avoid drugs. And so he went online and he found so much information. And unfortunately, what it did for Tim was that it really made him mostly overwhelmed uh, and afraid because he realized that all the stuff he was reading didn't really jive with the way that he felt like he should be living his life. So let's just go over a short list of some of the things that he was recommended. Uh, from a supplement perspective, he was basically told that collagen is the number one thing. He was told to eat uh, an alkaline diet and that he needed to maintain alkaline blood at all times. And he should measure this in his urine and he should be drinking alkaline water and that he should probably be testing his his poop because he needed to make sure that his uh, gut was working and that it was alkaline. He was told that he needed to eat a vegan diet and basically take a list of a couple hundred different supplements. So if that sounds familiar, you're not alone. Um, here's what I want to do today. I want to talk about a supplement that keeps coming up in our consultations for bone health. And this is something that we keep recommending over and over and over again. And whenever I see something that is very consistent like this, I want to pass it along because it can really make this process of trying to find what the right thing for you is. So we're going to go through really the four components of this combo supplement, why I think it's the best and stick around until the end, because I'm going to tell you exactly what it is. I actually have a, a promo code uh, that goes along with this video that I have no financial interest in just passing this along to you. Um, and I'm going to tell you why it doesn't include calcium. So stick around. We're going to go through all of that and we're going to talk about what we ended up doing for Tim. Okay, so like I said, this is a combo supplement and whenever possible, I think it's best to combine things into a single capsule or, or tablet or whatever when you can because it's so easy to get capsule fatigue and be taking too many supplements and I always want to avoid that for my patients. So whenever possible, if you can get the right doses and forms of vitamins and minerals into one thing, it's great. One of the challenges I see is that when you take a lot of the bone health products that are out there, I find that A, they have too much calcium in them and, and B, they don't have enough of the other stuff. You know, they list all the things so it looks cool and it looks good. But I get people asking me in the YouTube comments all the time, what about this supplement? What about this and this and this? And pretty much across the board, my answer is it's too much calcium and there's not enough other good stuff. And if you look at the literature on all the calcium products, and there are plenty of companies out there that are trying to do this, they'll say that their calcium is the best and they'll talk about studies that support that. But what they're actually saying is that this product that we're making that also has calcium in it has the right stuff to improve bone health. And it's generally the other stuff if you actually look at the details of the study. So it's the other stuff that matters usually more than the calcium. So what matters about this supplement? Well, this is a, a product that has four fat soluble vitamins in it. And the first one I'm going to talk about is vitamin A. Now, if you haven't seen my vitamin A uh, video, go ahead and, and take a look at that one if you want all the details, but I'll give the summary here. So vitamin A is an interesting vitamin because there's so much fear around it and truthfully around all the fat soluble vitamins because there's a fear of taking too much. And that's true. You can take too much of a fat soluble vitamin, but Remember, you have to understand how much you're getting, and then you have to weave your way around all of the, the dogma and the stories that are out there around the different forms of animal versus plant. And we, we keep getting stuck in this animal versus plant thing. So here's the thing with vitamin A. There is fear of taking too much. It is extremely uncommon and kind of difficult to do so as long as you understand what you're taking. Uh, and if you haven't seen the video, again, I would encourage you to do that. But the summary is this. Basically, vitamin A, if you look at the risk of consumption of vitamin A and the risk of hip fracture, there are studies that say that the more you take, the bigger your risk. It's true. Also studies to say that the less you take, the bigger your risk. So it has a U-shaped curve. And when you look at how much vitamin A is recommended, they describe the recommendation as RAE, retinol activity equivalents, RAE. And it's 700 to 900 RAEs. Well, what the heck does that mean? Well, 
vitamin A is delivered in kind of two forms. There's the plant form, which are in the, the carotenoids, beta carotene is the most common. And then there are the animal forms, which are different forms of retinol. And so when you look at a product, if it says vitamin A and doesn't say what kind, you can probably assume that it means plant, but you probably should make sure. But usually they're, they're talking about car carotenoids or beta carotene. And so when you see something that says it has a thousand micrograms of vitamin A, and it's in beta carotene, you have to do math with some kind of a denominator. And the challenge is we don't know what that denominator is. It could be divided by 10, it could be divided by 30, it's probably somewhere in between. We just don't know because there are conversion differences and there are genetic differences in absorption and utilization. So it's really hard to know how much vitamin A you're actually utilizing if you're getting plant forms of vitamin A. Now, animal forms of vitamin A are gonna have retinol in them. Um, retinol is going to come again in different forms, but ultimately you're getting this RAE, retinol activity equivalent, and it's a one-to-one -one ratio because we absorb and utilize vitamin A when it's in that form, the active form of vitamin A. So the most common sources would be um, things like eggs, um, uh, meat products, poultry, pork, fish, etc. Liver has very dense vitamin A in it, and this is where the concern of eating too much liver and you're going to get vitamin A toxic. I don't know anybody that eats that much liver. It's in theory true, and this is why, again, you should know how much you're consuming. Um, but getting the right form of vitamin A is absolutely important because vitamin A is critical for iron transport. It's critical for utilization of all of the other vitamins and minerals that interact with vitamin A, and there's a lot of them. So this is a critical nutrient. Um, again, important for eyes, important for skin, and important for bone. It's not as clear as some of the others as to what the mechanism is, but we know, again, deficiency, fracture, too much fracture, maybe. Uh, and again, watch that video on that one. So vitamin A is important, and getting it in the correct form is the, is the, the hard part because almost every supplement out there is gonna have it in a, a beta carotene form, or just not say, and then again, you can assume that it's probably in a beta carotene form. So vitamin A in a retinol or retinol form is gonna be what's important when it comes to a supplement for bone health. So the second vitamin that is in this product that I like is vitamin K. Now I have not done a, a individual video on vitamin K yet and I absolutely need to and I will get that done. But let's just talk about vitamin K in general. So before we talk about the different forms, vitamin K we know is intrinsically involved in calcium metabolism. It is so because it activates osteocalcin and it can actually help to improve the hydroxyapatite calcification. It can improve osteoblast function. It actually has other roles in brain health and sexual health and insulin sensitivity. Vitamin K I think is the new vitamin D. It's really coming out that people need more of this and it's kind of hard to get through diet when you are looking for the right forms. And here again is a similar conversation to vitamin K is vitamin A. And you see this with all the fat soluble vitamins for the most part. So here's the thing, vitamin K1 comes in plants and uh, just like vitamin A, you have to convert it into K2 for it to have an impact on the things we're talking about. K1 does have an impact in, in the body um, as a unique vitamin as well. And this is where vitamin K metabolism gets pretty confusing. But what we're looking for is the impact of vitamin K2. And there are two versions of vitamin K2. So vitamin K2, you're gonna get more from fermented foods. Um, natto is a, a fermented soy product that has uh, relatively high amounts. I hear it doesn't taste very good though. You can also get it through uh, certain types of cheese, but you're probably not gonna get it in large amounts. So this is one that is relatively frequently uh, in need of supplementation. The difference between vitamin K2 and the vitamin K2 in this product is that there are two forms of K2 out there. And this is where it gets actually really confusing because there's actually two forms and then two subforms. So there's K2, there's K2 is MK4 and K2 is MK7. And I'm not gonna get into what the differences are, just know that there are differences. MK4 has a shorter half-life and uh, goes away more quickly, essentially. MK7 sticks around longer. So same K2, just formed a little bit differently MK7 sticks around longer and has a bigger impact on the hormones that have an impact on bone health and on calcium metabolism. So that's why we like MK7. So if you're looking at products, you need to know, okay, K1 or K2, uh, MK4 or MK7. And now we're going to take it another step further. And this gets even more confusing. And I'm so sorry. Um, but if you've ever taken organic chemistry, and if you haven't, I don't recommend it. It was my worst grade in college. Uh, but 
if you take organic chemistry, you start to understand the the way that these things are laid out. So the actual structure, elemental structure of these vitamins and minerals. And there are these things uh, from a, a layout perspective called cis versus trans, and this is not a gender thing. But cis just is one way that the, uh, the molecules can be lined up, and trans is the other. So the cis form is not active, meaning that the cis form does you no good. Now, if you look at most products, you can see that it doesn't say cis or trans. And if it doesn't say, it's usually a combination of the two. Trans form is active. So actually, we want as much of the trans form of vitamin K2 as MK7. Whew. Okay. So knowing that, then the next question is, how much do you need? You'll see products that have as little as, you know, a teens, 10 to 20 micrograms. Uh, and then you'll see that this product that I'm about to recommend has 300 micrograms. Um, how much is too much? There's not a lot of literature showing any toxicity at any known level. And there are some animal studies and human studies with really big doses that don't show any downside. So what's the risk? The risk is the concern of blood clots. And so there is a concern that uh, if you are consuming too much vitamin K because vitamin K is involved in the blood clotting pathway, that you could actually see uh, increased blood clots if you take vitamin K. Now, for most people, that's not true. If you have concern about that, obviously talk to your doctor. I'm not making any recommendations for anybody watching this video other than telling you the thing that I'm recommending for my patients. There is a drug that does have an interaction with vitamin K that you should know about if you're on it, and it's called Coumadin or Warfarin. It is an older blood clot drug, so a drug to actually thin blood to prevent blood clots. Uh, that drug, yes, absolutely, vitamin K matters. All the other blood clotting drugs, probably not. Uh, but again, you have to ask your own doctor if that matters for you. All right. So one of the things that really helped Tim in his process and figuring out what was right was actually seeing this channel. The reason why Tim got to see this channel is because people made this channel more popular for people looking for bone health information. And the way that we do that is by sharing it, by clicking like, by clicking subscribe, and the more we interact, leave comments, all these things, the more YouTube will pick up this channel, the uh, traffic and the quality of the information, and it'll put that out there for other people looking for tips and tricks around osteoporosis. So if you could do all those things for me, that would help me to help other people. Now, Tim also participated in our masterclass. And so our masterclass, if you haven't done it, if you look in the description below, you'll find a link to this. It is a, a totally free thing that we do live about every two weeks. Um, and you have, should have an ability to ask questions there and you'll get lots of information about how we recommend people to tackle osteoporosis and bone health on their own and a little bit about how we do it too. Um, we also have a new book that is uh, hopefully released by the time this video comes out. If you want to look for a link for a free download of that book, or you can actually buy it on Amazon too, uh, but look for that link also in the description below. And this is a, a book that I wrote specifically about our osteoporosis breakthrough concepts and ways that we can improve bone health. So thank you uh, for helping me to help others. All right, so the third component of this vitamin is vitamin E. So another fat-soluble vitamin. This one's very popular. It has a role in anti-inflammatory immune system. It probably does a lot more than that. But vitamin E is kind of a difficult one because we really only see it in one form, for the most part, in uh, supplements. The most common form in the body is called alpha tocopherol. And I apologize for the names. This is why this is so hard to talk about. But this is one of eight forms of this vitamin. And so um, we see alpha tocopherol in supplements because it's the most common in the body. But there's evidence to say in good research, big studies that would show that if you give high doses of alpha tocopherol, for about half of the population, the results are actually negative, meaning that it actually makes them worse. So it's funny that we see this in high doses in lots of vitamins, and yet we know that for half of the population, this isn't going to be good for them. So um, why would that be? Well, there's a genetic thing associated with it. It's testable and we test it in patients, but ultimately all you have to do is just not take high doses of alpha tocopherol. The eight forms come in two subclasses, tocopherol and tocotrienols, and there are alpha, beta, gamma, delta of each of those two. So alpha, beta, gamma, delta, tocopherol, tocotrienol. We basically just need a blend of all of them and not too much of one or the other. So you just need a combination of all eight forms. They all serve different roles in the body and it gets really complex and I apologize for that. Uh, but we want to avoid those high doses of alpha tocopherol. 
Okay, so then lastly, vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is no surprise for most people that this needs to be uh, part of a bone health regimen, and most people watching this are on vitamin D, as they should be. The vitamin D form that we like and recommend for our patients is cholecalciferol. This is a little bit confusing because people will say, oh, it's, it's vitamin D3, or it's the active form of vitamin D, and those are actually both not true. But cholecalciferol is the supplemented form that when you consume it orally, your body will convert it in the liver to 25 hydroxy vitamin D. That's actually a D3. And then that goes through the kidneys, gets converted again to 125 dihydroxy uh, vitamin D, and that's actually the active form. So vitamin D is a really complex one. You just have to make sure you're getting enough, but you can get too much. So this really does need to be tested if you're taking this in relatively big doses, and this product that I'm talking about um, has the potential to drive people too high. So this is one that really needs to be tested for sure. All right, so what's the product that I'm talking about? I've got it right here. Uh, it is called Protect Plus from Health Jevity. And uh, again, I have no financial interest in this product whatsoever. Um, I do know the CEO, Michael Antonelli. Uh, I met him at an A4M conference, and he is doing a, a fantastic job. It's a great company, high quality products of, of really good stuff. Um, the reason why I like it is that it has all four of those things that I mentioned in really robust forms and amounts. Um, so like I said, you do need to be testing vitamin D. If you're going to use this product, it is available over the counter. If you look in the description below, you'll see a, a code for 15% off. Um, if you go to their website, um, I believe it's 15% off. And uh, again, that all just goes to you. We have no financial relationship in that whatsoever. So you might be asking yourself, okay, you just recommended a supplement that doesn't have calcium in it. It's true. So here's the thing that we have really come to identify with calcium over the last uh, several years of, of working with bone health patients, which is we probably don't need to get to 1200 milligrams. And I have a video on this. Uh, if you want to look up, I think it's called stop taking your calcium supplements. Now we still do recommend calcium for people under certain circumstances. But the thing that we have really gotten very good at is helping people to monitor how much calcium they're getting through food, recognizing that we don't probably need to hit 1200, coming up with a goal that makes sense uh, for where they are in their life and their other factors, um, and then aiming for that and getting that through food. If they fall short of that, then we can supplement calcium. But the problem with most bone health products is that there's just way too much calcium. Uh, you know, there's a thousand milligrams of calcium and we don't even need to get that much total and yet we're adding that on top of what we're getting through food so uh, so this is why we've kind of pulled back on this we don't recommend uh, big doses of these big bone products uh, because they generally have too much calcium in them so working on creating our own which will have more of the other stuff it'll probably have stuff like what's in this product and then some other um, you know essential things uh, that you guys are all probably familiar with um, and so we'll combine all these things into our own product in the future. But for now, I like this product in combination with numerous other things. But this is a reasonable starting point, one capsule, and I love that. So thanks for making it to the end of this video. Uh, this is our update of supplements for uh, summer 2023. We'll keep updating this as we continue to change and improve bone health with as many people as we can. Thanks again.